let's talk about MP Materials. A publicly traded mining company called MP Materials is up more than 300% this year and hit an all-time high in August 2025. Why the stock explosion? They don't sell chips. They don't make EVs. They mine something called neodymium? That's a rare earth metal. And while you may not know the name, it powers your phone, your car, and ultimately maybe the future of your country. First, let's understand what a rare earth metal is. In the periodic table, there are 17 elements classified as rare earth metals, mostly along the bottom row of the periodic table marked here in blue called lanthanides. Let's zoom in on four in particular, praseodymium, neodymium, terbium, and dysprosium. When praseodymium and neodymium are alloyed together, they make ultra strong magnets, the kinds inside your phone speaker, your car motor, and wind turbines. Terbium creates thermal stability and supports magnet performance. It's in LEDs, sonar systems, and smart weapons. High stick stuff. Dysprosium helps those magnets survive extreme heat, so it shows up in EVs and military tech. All of these metals aren't rare because they're scarce, they're rare because they're hard to separate. And almost all of them come from one place, China. China controls 63% of global rare earth mining and over 85% of global refining. That's led to a price war. Since 2020, neodymium is up 300%, terbium up 200%, and dysprosium nearly doubled. These days, control over these obscure elements might matter more than control over oil ever did. The US only has one major rare earth mine in Mountain Pass, California, owned by, you guessed it, MP Materials. It's trying to bring the full supply chain home. It's a race against time and also China's monopoly. In Mountain Pass, MP Materials makes a core product called NDPR Oxide, a mixed rare earth oxide containing both neodymium and praseodymium. In Mountain Pass, MP Materials makes a core product called NDPR Oxide, a mixed rare earth oxide containing both elements. MP doesn't yet make magnets, but they're building the capability. There are three phases to their growth. In phase one, where we are now, they make NDPR oxide and ship it to magnet manufacturers abroad. In phase two, they're building a refining factory to process entirely on site. And in phase three, they're building a whole magnet factory to be headquartered in Fort Worth, Texas. All of this costs money, tons of it. So the stock spiked at the end of the summer as a result of a few huge announcements. First, the Department of Defense, sorry, the Department of War, took a $400 million equity stake in MP Materials, making it MP's largest shareholder. That wasn't just money, it came with $150 million loan, a guaranteed price floor on their oxide and a pledge to build that magnet factory I mentioned in phase three. Basically, they're saying that MP Materials' success is a matter of national defense. Then, not even a week later, Apple stepped in with a $500 million multi-year commitment to buy these future-made rare earth magnets and to chip in themselves to building this magnet factory in Texas. And don't forget GM. While this isn't new news, MP has a binding long-term deal with General Motors to supply their magnets for major EVs. In Q2 of this year, MP Materials made 443 metric tons of NDPR oxide. In 2028, they committed to 10,000. All eyes are now on MP Materials. It'll be interesting to watch this one closely. One thing is definitely now clear. Whoever controls rare earths controls the future.